Hey guys, so can your motorhome or RVs water pipes freeze during the night while you're out camping? Well, yes, they can, I'm sorry to say, but I've experienced it myself last winter when I, that I spent in Norway. Uh, one of our water pipes froze as soon as it got uh, a bit extra chilly, let's just say that. So I went in the shower and it was just trickling a little bit of water that was freezing cold and I couldn't <laughs> take my shower because the water pipe was frozen. And the day before it was completely fine but during the night when we lower the temperature a little bit from on the thermostat uh, part of the water pipe froze. Don't worry there are ways to fix this and we're gonna get into that. First coffee. So the thing for me was that the bathroom sink was still working and it never froze during the whole winter, never. Uh, but then the shower and kitchen sink, those ones, the pipes going up to those ones froze. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because on this side of the RV, on the left side, uh, we have our uh, furnace and uh, water heater. It's a combined one. And then from there, uh, it, it's leading uh, warm air ducts from the furnace uh, alongside the water pipes and it goes back to the toilet in the back and there the water pipes go straight up to the kitchen, no, to the bathroom sink. Uh, so those were always well insulated and um, always had hot air around them since the air duct from the furnace was going right next to them. And then the pipes continued and uh, down on the, the right side behind the fridge and behind the fridge there's always the ventilation hole, right? Yeah, so we have the ventilation hole here and then the water pipe just right next to the, right behind the ventilation hole. So of course when it was getting cold all that freezing air from outside was just blowing right onto the to the water pipe that was leading to the the kitchen sink and to the shower. So of course it was gonna freeze if it's getting too cold, right? Of course, right below there uh, was the also the heating duct. But remember that the heating duct has now gone almost around the whole RV. So of course it's not gonna be as hot air there as it was before. And that's also part of the reason why, why the water pipe to the, the bathroom sink was working good. And when we were running the furnace on a higher temperature setting, uh, I think it was enough to, to keep that pipe from freezing during the days. But at the nights we turned it down a little bit and then it froze. So what I noticed, it was like the, the bathroom sink was working properly, very good. And then and the kitchen sink and the shower wasn't working good at all. It was just either trickling just a couple of drops of water or um, so I started following the pipes because I knew that it had to be something wrong in between the um, the bathroom sink and uh, the kitchen sink. So somewhere along there along the line something is wrong. So I followed the pipes and I noticed that that part was frozen and very poorly insulated. So what did I do? Well I insulated the shit out of that water pipe and I put it um, around the the heating duct so it would get uh, external heat from that one and before I did that the the pipe froze when it got about minus 13 degrees Celsius which is about 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and after I insulated it it lasted until about minus 20 degrees Celsius or uh, 4 degrees Fahrenheit around those numbers. So good insulation is a very very important thing in your RV if you want to go winter camping and I really recommend you to take a look at your water system setup and see if there's any like obvious spots that's like oh yeah that's gonna freeze if it gets cold like in my case where it was just a water pipe going up right next to the ventilation hole. On the other hand if you have a new motorhome that's specially made for winter and that's like already very well insulated for example, in Europe, uh, the brand Koa Bay is very popular for winter camping. Those guys, they run tests on their motorhomes 
even down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. So if you have one of those, those are already gonna be properly insulated and you won't have to worry. On the other hand, if you're like me and you have an RV from 90, 1996, that's not even properly insulated and uh, not good for winter camping, well then you need to do some work yourself. Maybe put in some extra insulation in the floor or on the roof and around your water pipes. So how did I thaw those pipes properly? Well, I just cranked up the heat in the morning uh, and it, it thawed them out. It took quite a long time if I only did it with the furnace, the original furnace, then it took about five, six hours to get those pipes thawed. Uh, but to make that even faster, I poured down hot water through the kitchen drain because that uh, the drain pipe was going near the water line. So by pouring down warm water through the dra drain. The drain got really warm and the frozen pipe was right next to it. So then I got some extra um, heat to the, to the frozen pipe that way. And also I was running warm water through the, the water pipe to the, the bathroom sink that was still working first. And when it got really, really hot, I opened up the faucets a little bit on the warm water just to push some warm water through towards that uh, frozen part and it's important that you don't overdo that because running your water pump through uh, and building up pressure into those frozen pipes can be quite dangerous you know when the water has uh, frozen it expands and your water pipe then expands and it could be extra fragile or it could even crack so it's also very important that you look for cracks or water leaks after something like this have happened. Uh, so there's a bunch of different options. I hope that you, you manage and remember to check for leaks and remember to check your insulation around your water system. You're gonna be all good.